Okay, so we got a special case now. Uh, when, when we first introduced linear equations, we talked about the, the three cases that you have. Now, almost all the time, you have these linear equations ending with exactly one solution, the one number that makes this equation true. But there are two other cases. Cases when we have no solution, and cases where we have infinite solutions. We're going to look at those two cases today. We're spending a little bit of time on it because they look very similar if you're not really paying attention. And no matter what, they look really weird. So you're going to do them and go like, what the heck? What's going on here? And a lot of times students get stuck because they don't know how to interpret what's going on. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, these are the only three examples that we're going to take a look at today. Uh, the first one, very special one. I want to talk a, a, a little bit about that just to get out of the way. And then we'll focus more on these ones. Firstly, when you have like something like 8x equals 0, this definitely linear equation. Equation, hey, one variable to the first power, definitely linear. A lot of students will look at that and go, that's not possible. You can't have 8x equals 0. I mean, what would you plug in to multiply by 8 to get 0? Well, what would you do? What would you multiply by 8 to get 0? Well, 0. This is not a case where you have no solution. This does have a solution, but a lot of students get tricked and they go, well, you can't do anything with this. Sure you can, follow your steps. Can you simplify it? Well, no. There's no distribution, there's no like terms, there's no fractions, no decimals. There's no smaller variables, so steps two is out of the uh, picture. There's no constant next to the variable. This is your coefficient, nothing added or subtracted, so there's no constant. So basically, we're on the very last step. We're on the, hey, just divide. Get rid of your coefficient. So if we have our 8x equals 0, how do you get rid of the 8? Well, 8's connected to your variable by multiplication. Let's undo that. Remember with division, we're trying to get 1's next to our variable. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 1 times our variable gives us back x. On the right-hand side, that looks a little funky. Go, what the heck? Can I divide 0 by 8? Well, sure. Can you divide 8 by 0? Well, no, but that can't happen in linear equations. If you end up dividing by 0, then you don't have a variable to start with. So you can't ever divide by 0 in linear equations. It's not legal mathematically. You can't do it. But you can divide 0 by a number. I'll, I'll prove it to you. Um, can you... Can you take a pizza that has eight slices? That's what fractions mean. Your denominator tells you how many pieces you've cut something into. Here's a pizza with eight slices. Can you have a pizza with eight slices and have zero slices? Sure you can. It's called a diet. So can you see the pizza and not have any? How much pizza have you had? Zero. That's what this represents. It's a pizza with eight slices. You have had none of them, hence you've eaten zero pizza. Okay? Now, the other one, just, just to be thorough. This means this. This means take no pizza. It doesn't exist. Now eat eight slices. Mmm, it's tasty. Can you do? No, that's impossible. You can't have eight slices out of nothing. That, that doesn't make sense. Unless you're my little three-year-old daughter, she imagines this all the time, that's great for her. But that pizza doesn't taste very good because it's imaginary pizza. This is impossible. This is certainly possible, hence there is a solution. The solution is zero. Dividing a number by zero will not happen in linear equations. Therefore, this you don't have to worry about. Okay, now the other stuff. Let's go through it. We're, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time doing the math on this. This is not what this lesson is for. This lesson is to interpret the result. So you at this point should be really good at determining linear equation. That looks really funky. Uh, I've messed up on something here. That can't have that. There we go. So Interpreting, yes, linear equation, we've got one variable raised to the first power, there's an equal sign, and another linear equation, one variable raised to the first power, equal sign. So let's go through our steps, kind of light speed. If you want to pause the video and try it on your own, do it. But we should be noticing the first thing I'd be doing is simplifying. We'd be distributing. We'd be making sure we hit our negative 2 distributing. We'd be combining some like term, oh, and here's where it gets weird. When you start combining like terms, and after you combine your like terms, 
all of your variables disappear and you go, what the 4x minus 4x is zero. Yeah, that's okay, that's fine. Zero x's, your x's are gone. It starts to look a little weird. Keep going, don't stop. Combine your like terms with your constants. You have positive two. Hang on to this for a second. I'm gonna interpret this in a little bit. Do the other one. So we check out my linear equation. We know that we've got to distribute first. No problem. Leave your 2x. Get your minus x minus 5 by distribution. On the right-hand side, we get x minus 5. Let's combine some like terms. None here. No like terms on this side. Yes, like terms here. We've got a 2x and a minus x. That gives us x. And you go, oh, dude, that's weird, too. If ever you get the same exact thing on both sides of your equation, something's a little fishy here, get rid of your smaller variable. You go, I don't have a smaller variable. Okay, let's just subtract x for funsies. You subtract x, and you get negative 5 equals negative 5. These are the two cases where you have either no solution, or you have infinite solutions, and it's all about the interpretation. You can see from the board they look very, very similar. In both cases, you completely eliminate the variable. That is not what's telling you no solution or infinite solutions. It completely destroying the variable, whether you combine like terms and getting no variable, or whether you're adding or subtracting both sides and getting no variables left, that's not the key. The key is what you have after that. So look down at your answer, your answers, I suppose. Look down here. The key is determining if this is never true or if this is always true. So when you're looking at the difference between no solutions and infinite solutions, both cases, you're going to be eliminating your variable entirely. Now look at what you have remaining. Is 2 ever equal to 10? Ever? Well, no, because if it was, I'd say, hey, you bring $10 and I'll bring $2 and let's swap because it's equal. That doesn't make any sense. So if this is not equal, this is no solution. This is never, ever, ever true. This side never, ever equals this side. It can't happen. You've eliminated your variable. There's no way to make it possible. This, when you've eliminated your variable completely and your two sides are not equal, you have no solution. Please make a, a mental note here. If you don't get rid of your, your variable completely, you have a solution, no matter what it looks like. Okay, so if you have a variable still in a linear equation, it's got a solution. Only when you completely eliminate the variable through your math, through your simplification, or through your getting rid of a, a variable on both sides, that is when you have these two cases, no solution or infinite solutions. That's why they're rare. So when we get down with no variable and our sides are not equal, they're never equal, that's no solution. When we eliminate our variable and we get down to here and we just have sides that are always equal, negative 5 is always equal to negative 5. You can show this too. Even if you added 5 to both sides, you get 0 equals 0. 0 is always equal to 0. No matter what you do here, the two sides are always equal. In fact, you can stop right here. x minus 5 is always equal to x minus 5, no matter what you plug in. Because you'd have to plug it in here, and you'd have to plug it in here. Take 50, take a million, take negative 37. It's always going to be equal. This is the case where you have infinite solutions, because no matter what you plug in, you're going to make a true statement. So the difference is not whether or not you eliminate the variable. If you eliminate the variable in a linear equation, you're going to be one of these two cases. Look at what's happening in the cases. Are you never true, so your sides don't equal? No solution. Are you always true? Your sides are always equal. That's infinite solutions. That's the difference. It gets tricky because they look very similar to start with, but it's all about interpreting the result that you get. Remember, if you have a variable left, you always have a solution with a linear equation. Hopefully that helps clear some things up for you, and I'll see you um, in the next section we start talking about word problems.